Our office windows are armor plated. Well, not really. Let me explain. Our goal for this office was to look like it had blast shields that moved up and down. So we need to make some covers the hydraulics would live behind. Since we don't want the hydraulics to get damaged, we need to make them look like they have armor plating also. The next part is, what do we want these faux covers to look like? Well, the hardest part is, we need to blend the bottom to the top. And with so many conceptual art designs, which one is going to look the best? So, we decided on this one. We like the look and I think it's going to look really cool, but it's going to require a lot of pieces to make this happen. I've decided on a three piece design with a bottom section, an upper section, and a floating middle column. Leaving this middle section floating leaves us some play room in case our top and bottom sections are different distances apart. I start my design off of concept art that Drew's put together and do my best to bring it into reality. With these pillars, they're an extension of the light fixtures that are below, so we need to find a way to tie them in together. Now that I've got these parts designed up in CAD, I'm going to get them over to Jason so we can get them cut out on the water jet. Now that we have our pieces cut on the water jet, I need to decide how I want to go about building our floating middle columns. When it comes to building a three-sided box, I have three methods that come to mind. The first being a lap joint. The lap joint is easy and simple to build. It's one middle piece sandwiched in between two side pieces. However, the downside is you still see exposed end grain of plywood. The second method that comes to mind is another version of a lap joint, where you have two shorter sides capped with a top piece. This method still shows end grain of the plywood, but shows significantly less of it. This is not ideal because we want our column to look like one solid piece. The third method that comes to mind is the miter joint. This has 45 degree bevels cut on every single edge. And when the joint comes together, you only see the face grain of the plywood. This gives us the solid box shape that we were looking for, as well as gives us extra surface area for glue, which makes the structure stronger. Now that I've decided how I want to build the boxes, I'll show you guys a trick that I picked up working as a fine finished carpenter to get nice, crisp, clean miter joints. I start by setting the table saw to cut a 45 and a half degree bevel. If you were to cut your miters at 45 degrees exactly, you would notice that your corners come to just over 90 degrees the majority of the time. Now we're going to lay our boards out flat with the mitered edges facing upwards. And you should see no gap in between your boards. Now I'm going to take just regular packing tape and run it down my edges. Now with everything sealed up, we can flip our boards over and get ready for our glue up.